back to Pratt, and obviously they re uh, reduced their, or eliminated people that wouldn't, wouldn't change. And so then they go fixing the two key activities. Because Pratt conducts two basic activities in phys physical production, fabrication of individual parts for, from castings or forgings, and assembly of these parts, along with many others from suppliers, into complete engines, the physical transformation of Pratt that follow comes clearly into view if we look for, look for a minute at what Ed Northern did to transform turbine blade fabrication and what Bob Weiner did to transform final assembly. The billion dollar room. Ed Northern manages a single vast room in North Haven, Connecticut. It measures a thousand feet by a thousand feet and it can easily survey from the front door. In this room in 1991, 1,350 Pratt employees used 600 sophisticated machines to manufacture 1 billion worth of turbine blades and guide vanes for jet engines. Because jet engines themselves are usually sold at low cost, indeed, in some recent cases practically given away, and because the frequently replaced guide vanes and turbine blades are sold at multiples of their actual production costs, what happens in Ed Northern's room largely determines whether Pratt and Whitney can make a living. The problem in 1993 was that North Haven's costs were so high that Pratt was not garnering enough profits on its razor blades to sustain its razor jet engine business. Even worse, in the effort to switch over to lean methods, North Haven was failing to meet its shipping schedules. Back orders were soaring and Pratt's cash flow was severely affected. When Ed Northern first walked into the room in August of 1993, he faced a life or death task. So think about a thousand square feet. So we have 350 feet across, right? So just think about how far a thousand square foot, thousand feet in each direction is for a building to try and get everything to change and get things in the right direction. 